Everyone, welcome. Thanks for uh, stopping by. So today we got a lot of things to go over, so uh, let's just jump right in. So the first thing uh, is that this is our second in a series of the watch-alongs. And the watch-alongs is when I put out different videos that were important and people had a lot of questions about, what I want to do is just to go over those and they are pre-recorded videos. And this is a video that I did over a year ago, which I talked about uh, when I'm going to be selling uh, up to 80% of my Bitcoin and altcoins, why I'm going to do that, the different indicators that I'm looking at and uh, everything in between. So you can uh, maybe incorporate that into your strategy if that's what you plan to do. Now I must stress that uh, for this uh, strategy, this is not financial advice. I can't give you any of that advice. I don't know who you are or what you're doing or your particular circumstances. And of course, I'm not your dad. So it's up to you to figure out what is the best reason for you, but hopefully you can incorporate uh, some of that uh, into your uh, planning uh, moving forward. So before we get going, I just want you guys, uh, I got to ask a question, is the audio okay? I'm using a new microphone. This was uh, recommended to me by Guy from Coin Bureau. He said this is one of the best ones that he uh, uses. So let me know if uh, there's any kind of uh, reverberation or any kind of problems as we get going. And looks like it's going pretty good. All right. So the first thing is first, and that is, uh, I want to say thanks everybody to uh, people who have reached out. I uh, have a uh, herniated disc because I'm an idiot and uh, I tried to rip out a stump and uh, uh, out of my uh, backyard over 10 years that's been there. And uh, of course I broke things. So uh, thanks everybody for uh, putting, uh, chiming in and tell me what uh, would be pretty good to do. Also, uh, me and Guy did our uh, NFA live video today. Ben is uh, sick yet again uh, because of uh, his four kids that keep uh, infecting him with either kind of some kind of virus or bacteria, which is uh, normal if you've got four kids running around. If you're a parent, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then uh, also, uh, before we move on and we get into the video, we do the watch along. Again, I will just be playing it. I will monitor the comment section. So if you have questions for every little little segment, I will stop it, answer those questions, and we'll go from there. But before we get into it, I thought this was very relevant to what we're going to talk about. This is Graham Stephen, and he actually inter interviewed the uh, Dogecoin millionaire. And this is why it's so important to at some point think about taking profits, because how many of you wrote everything all the way up and then all the way back down? Don't worry, you're not the first, and you're definitely not going to be the last. So what I want to do is have you listen to this. This is about a minute or so long. Let me bring up the uh, actual tab so you can actually hear it perfectly and go from there. The Dogecoin Millionaire, we did a one hour podcast and the second half of that podcast was just trying to convince him to sell. This is someone who's making 50 grand a year and he sold everything he had, maxed out his credit cards and put 150 or 200 grand in Dogecoin. And at the peak, it was worth $3 million. Yeah. And we broke it down. I'm like, dude, you will never have to work a day in your life after tax. Invest it in here. You can pull 3% of it out every single year. That's your salary. You've made your salary for life. If you just sell right now, why take the risk? Mm -hmm. And so it, well, he didn't sell. What's the worst financial decision you see 20, 30 year olds make? Not setting up a Roth IRA. You could be a millionaire from this. You and it's incredibly easy. Is? It's a retirement account. And by the time you're 65, all that profit you make within the account is tax free. But the goal is that when you're young, and doing that, you have 40 years of compound interest where all of a sudden that $800 you invest could be worth 8,000 and it's tax free. And the limit is $6,500 a year. And there are ways to get a, you know, more than that or if you're above the income limit. But for most people, it takes 10 minutes to set up an account. Dogecoin Millionaire, we did a. Yeah, so that's uh, I think pretty relevant to what we're gonna talk about today, especially the Dogecoin Millionaire as we uh, get into it. And that's the very first part actually. And then, of course, with the uh, IRA, that's what Peter Thiel did. If you don't know Peter Thiel, one of the big investors, he put uh, his PayPal stock into his IRA when it was worth absolutely nothing. And that was, uh, he turned that into billions and billions of dollars, actually $5 billion. And, of course, that'll be tax-free to him when he turns 59 and a half years old, which I think he might already be. So congratulations to Peter Thiel for doing a pretty great job of using that IRA. And then also, if you uh, are looking at, uh, to find an, an IRA, obviously, we use iTrust, which is in the upper left-hand corner. They are a sponsor of the show. So just so you know, uh, there is a link in the description. It's a affiliate link. You don't have to use the affiliate link, but you get discounts for using it. So you can either go to iTrust IRA and check it out. Again, link in the description. You scroll down right around there. 
And uh, that is it. Now, if you're worried about uh, taxes right now, just so you know, if you have a Roth IRA, you can actually trade within your Roth IRA account. And guess what? There's no capital gains tax. Just think about that moving forward. All right. So here's what we get into. Now let's talk about selling. So I know some of this isn't very popular opinion. Some people say you should never sell, and that's fine. But for some of you who think to yourself, maybe I should sell just a little bit. Well, let's take a peek at that. So I'm going to pull this uh, video from uh, Dan Teaches Crypto. That is my website. It is 100% free. It will always be free. You can sign up. All I require is an email. I don't even spam you. I just tell you when I'm going to upload or when I upload something of interest. So this particular video is in module three investing. And again, the reason why we're doing this today is because uh, I thought it would be prudent, especially as we start to get into these, these bull markets and things are really ripping off. The question then is, you know, when do I sell? What's happening? Should I ever sell? And then uh, what are some indicators to look at? So I'm going to come down here. Here's a couple of good videos to check out. Here's the actual indicators we're going to take a look at. And here's the video itself. So let me bring this in. And let me present this so you can actually hear it the right way. So it's perfect audio. And go from there. Without further ado, let's do a quick watch along and go from there. What visual asset news about the Dogecoin millionaire? And this was a great video from Graham Stephen. And he wanted to just uh, talk to this gentleman, Dogecoin millionaire, who invested uh, roughly $180,000 of his money into Dogecoin when there wasn't really even a penny uh, for quite a long time, quite a long time ago. And it went from Less than a penny, there's $180,000, turned into $1.2 million in roughly 69 days. Unfortunately, uh, as time went on, he did the uh, same mistake I think we all do, which is believing that it's going to go to the moon and it's going to go to a dollar or $2 or whatever it was supposed to be. And unfortunately, as time went on, his portfolio uh, took a look and in uh, not too much time, it was down to $323,000. That is, uh, this was uh, shot about three months ago or so, and I'm sure it's down even more so. Today, it is September 21st. Bitcoin's around uh, $19,000. Ethereum's around 1200 and so on and so forth. So I want you to have this ingrained into your memory because Graham's going to ask him a very simple question, and he's going to answer it. And I want you to remember exactly what he says. Just take a listen. Now, do you regret holding so long? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm human. Uh, yeah, I should have sold some. <laughs> so yeah, that's an understatement. And actually, that 1.2 million actually ballooned up to 3 million before it crashed down to probably now around 200 thousand dollars. So remember, uh, you can write it all the way up, and you can write it all the way down. The choice is up to you. Which leads me to my next point, which is there's a phrase I use a lot, which is time in the market is more important than timing the market. And it's very true. I mean, the longer that you're staying in, usually the better it is. But that's for a very broad time horizon. I will just remind you that uh, today it's 2022, uh, September, and uh, we are looking at a Bitcoin price of 18846 And as a reminder, uh, if you would have bought uh, in December 2017, the 16th of December, you would have been up. 19,040, you would be down $1,000 right now on your Bitcoin. Again, it's all about your time horizon and how long you want to uh, expand yourself out. But along the way, there may be opportunities to uh, take some profits. Nobody ever went broke taking profits. And again, I can not stress this enough. I'm not a financial advisor. I cannot give you financial advice. You have to do your own research. These are just the things that I am actually doing. So if we take a look here. The thing that we really should be talking about is what everybody should know first, which is before selling or anything, you need to find, you have to define your trader type and you need to know your exit before your entry. What I'm talking about is this. There are many various types of traders out there and investors. There are scalpers. Uh, those just take seconds and they move very quickly. Day traders, minutes to hours. You have swing traders, which you can wait. They could open up a position, wait days. Position traders could wait uh, weeks or months, or then you got somebody like myself is like a cycle trader, which takes years to play out. Now, I kind of uh, go between position trader and a cycle trader uh, because I wait for quite a long time to unpack my bags as they were. And then also, 
if you want to just do a, a quick down and dirty example of, of profit, this is the most basic one you could probably think of. So let's just say you want to, and you want to know your exit before you get into it. This would be an example. You say, okay, I'm going to buy Bitcoin at whatever it is, $10,000. Bitcoin doubles its price to 20. I'm going to sell uh, about 11 K, which is uh, in my initial position, plus a little bit of profit. And I'm going to let the $9,000 that I have into Bitcoin just ride. Maybe it goes up to a million dollars and becomes the reserve world currency. And I am loaded for the rest of my life. Maybe, but that is just uh, one example. And I will tell you this, uh, for the examples that I've used, the things that I've done, this was my exit strategy uh, last cycle. And uh, it was just taking fractals, just taking a look at uh, where things had gone in the past and extrapolated those numbers to see where they could potentially go. And some were wrong and some were pretty, pretty solid on. Now, Ethereum was wrong. I thought it was going to, to uh, 10,000. And I would dollar cost average in and dollar cost average out. And unfortunately, I was only able to, to pick up the very first point and sold along the way, but not too much. Chainlink, uh, it was actually right. I thought it was, would go to $35. It actually went to $51. And the problem with this one, I think everybody knows, is that unfortunately I had a plan in place, but I didn't stick to my plan. And if I would have stuck to my plan, I would have made a lot more money uh, on selling off Chainlink because right now it's worth way less than $26. Bitcoin, again, I thought I'd go to, to uh, 150000 That didn't happen. Also, uh, EOS, that did not happen. I thought I'd go to 30 That was a bad one. Cardano, I thought I'd go to $30. It did roughly around, you know, I think it was uh, the all time high was 297 there, December 3rd. So pretty right. And then Theta, I actually got that one right. Uh, I thought I'd go to $10 and it went to $14. But so that these are just the examples I used before. But I think, I think there's a better way. And I put that video out uh, not too long ago. And you can find this uh, on the uh, website at Dan Teaches Crypto, which I took a look at cycle top callers, the Pi cycle top, NUP all time and risk. And also the cycle bottom, MBRVZ, two-year MA, 12 multiple and reserve risk to just get a better assessment of what could be considered the actual cycle top. But there's one more thing we really need to answer ourselves. And that is that what kind of investor uh, are you? Because you have to understand that the more conservative you are, the safer you are, but maybe not as great as returns. And this is the thing that I always struggle with. So as an ultra conservative type of investor, uh, that could be you. This is how I started out. 100% of everything I bought was in Bitcoin. And that was it. I didn't do any altcoins, nothing like that. As time went on, I got a little less ultra conservative and just a conservative. And I'd have Bitcoin about 90% of my portfolio, then 10% was Ethereum. And then you could go down that rabbit hole and go, well, I'm going to be a risk taker and I'm going to go 50% of Bitcoin and maybe 40% in the top 20. And then 10% could be 30 to number 1,000 of, of the cryptos and get really uh, down there, or you could be just a total degenerate and just go, okay, Bitcoin, I know is the safest one, but I just want a sliver and everything else will be in like the uh, number 200 to 3000 S coins and things like that. So when you look at these, remember that uh, if you're getting into these investments, uh, the risk versus reward, uh, it is so a lot of these are very risky, but the reward are high, but then of course you have the chance of losing everything. And before you knock any of the uh, degenerate moves, I will just say this, we have two channels. Uh, this is Digital Asset News. The other one is Dan Degen. And so far, they've done so well. So Gensu Kishi, Everdome, Fame, and Sweatcoin. When, you look, when we got into these prices, uh, Gensu Kishi was 0.01, uh, about a penny and a half. All-time high was $1.62. Not too bad. Everdome, Fame, Sweatcoin, so on and so forth. So the thing that you have to remember is when I'm getting into these, these cryptos, what is my risk versus reward? So the best way to... to, to uh, Take a look at that is to show you through a website called dcabtc.com and also uh, dca-cc.com. DCABTC, it only shows you Bitcoin. I'm just going to show you a, a quick example here. So let's just say, oh, for example, that uh, you have $100 and uh, you want to purchase $100 worth of Bitcoin uh, every week. And if you do that for the last six months, uh, you would be down almost a percentage uh, just buying things because the market's awful. But let's just back this up for a second. Let's just go over the last, I don't know, five years. Five years, and we go five years when we accumulated. And in actuality, if you would have done that $100 every week, you would get $26,100. Uh, your total value uh, for Bitcoin would be $105,000. And which is not too bad. However, at the top, it will have been 162000 depending on when you actually sold. So that's just, that's just Bitcoin itself. What I want to show you, of course, is that's pretty good. 
it's a very safe, safer play in the most uh, uh, volatile market. But what if you can do that with Ethereum? That's why I like this website, VCA-CC. I'm going to do this. Let's do uh, $100 again. And we do that on a weekly basis. And I picked uh, January 12, 2018, which was uh, one of its highs back in the last cycle to today. And I'm going to click on Calculate. And you can just see right here that, yeah, it was a little bit riskier, Ethereum being what it is. Uh, but actually, if you take a look at it for the, at the peak, you would have invested $20,000, just like we did with Bitcoin. But the balance in fiat or cash would be $339,000. let us take it one step further. Let's go to Cardano. The same thing. Let's, let's change this up. Let's put $100 every week from the same time frame, January 12, 2018 to September 19th, 2022. And if we do that, and then of course we calculate, we're going to see that in all honesty, we could have done pretty well. And if we go up here to the very tippy top, we would have invested 19100 somewhere around there. And we would have had $706,480, which is not bad for five years of work at the very top. Now, it's worth much less. And the problem that we have is people always talk about diamond hands and never selling, and they're just going to give this all to their, their, their grandkids and it's generational wealth. Look, if you want to do that, that's fine. I'm not here to judge you or tell you what to do. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. However, when I think about these things, I think that's not what I'm going to do, and these are not my goals. The things that I do are what I do. And, of course, you can take this information and roll it into your research to do your best thing for whatever uh, best suits you as far as investments. So I also, when I take a look at this, when everything goes up, you start to think, oh, well, I just need to keep going up and going up because that's what happens in markets, right? Well, no. However, there is an opposite thought process, which is, this is uh, from CNBC, and it talks about how the chart below shows how if you invested $10,000 into the S&P 500 index for a 20-year period between 1999 and 2018, this is how it would have performed. If you had just left it there and never touched it, your $10,000 would be a whopping $30,000, which is pretty good for doing absolutely nothing. I'll be honest with you. And the average annual return is 5.6%. But if you would have just missed 10 of the best days, 10 of the best rallies that were out there, your value would be less than half of what it is. So your average annual return is about 2%. You missed the 20 best, 20 best days, negative 0.3. Missed three best days, and so on and so forth. So again, when we talk about time in the market is more important than timing, that is true. The thing that we have to remember is that at some point, we're going to need to sell, at least for me. That's not for you. And I will just uh, um, finish up with this. Those examples I gave you with Cardano <clears throat> and Ethereum and Bitcoin, and uh, even this one with S&P, uh, things look pretty rosy. But remember, it's still a risky market, no matter where, what you get into. Here's two examples, a dash of salt. So these are two crypto projects that were pretty prevalent in the last uh, 2017 bull run. And you can see Dash did an amazing job of going from uh, 11, gosh, Three, four dollars, all the way to one thousand, almost fifteen hundred dollars, and then of course, what did it do after that? Not much at all, and then off we go, and that's absolutely nothing. And there's a, a worse example here, which is Salt. Salt was a lending platform, did very well. SEC got involved, and uh, there was a lawsuit, and uh, it was almost at fifteen dollars. And what has it done after that? Not too much. So remember. Things that you do could be extremely risky depending on what you get into. So having said all that and the warnings and things like that, let's talk about how everything starts with Bitcoin, the Pi Cycle Top. So, okay. So before we go on, uh, can everybody hear me? Just want to make sure because there's a point that I need to make here, which I think is pretty important moving forward. Now, when we talked about it, we talked about that dash assault and we said, you know, hey, some of these things are not going to uh, make it. And it's very true. And we gave you a couple examples. But on top of that, let me pull up this screen right uh, here. We did, we took a look at 
Uh, we, it, it's, it's called did an all time high. And there's a link in the description, like everything else, that you can find this actual chart. And we let me blow this up so you can see what I'm talking about. So when we took a look at it, I took a look at uh, the 2017, 2018 highs. And I took a look at December 2017, the top 53 cryptos uh, that were out there. Bitcoin's always been number one. I think it'll always be number one. I could be wrong. Sound off in the comment section. But I took a look at all of these coins over the top 53 as far as December 17, 2017. And I took a look at 2021 high highs of 2021 for the next cycle. How many of these actually hit just their all time highs? You would think it'd be very easy, right? Because I mean, there was more liquidity. We went from just over a trillion to 3.2, 3.3 trillion, correct in the comment section. So you'd think that most of these that were in the top 53 on 2017 would definitely hit their all-time highs from 2017. Well, guess what? Uh, only 11, 11 out of 53, that's 20%, one out of five hit their all-time highs moving forward. So again, when you think about this play, this cycle, and you're in love with an altcoin, that's fine. And I'm not here to dissuade you from that because you've done your own research and, and you're on top of things and I don't know anything better than you know. But I'm just telling you that as far as like last time, from 2017, 21, 21, there's only 20% in the top 53. Moving forward into the next bull run, which could be, who knows, 2024, 2025, 2026, you have to understand that some of these will not hit their all time highs and it's gonna hurt because you're like, what the heck? I did my research, I looked at it and it, was just, it just didn't get adopted. Uh, for whatever reason. So just, I want to make this extremely clear so you're protected and maybe you think about diversifying a little bit more and doing what you think is best for you. Okay, so uh, let me get off my soapbox. And then uh, let me uh, bring this up so you can hear the rest of this. Okay. If you're not familiar, we did a pretty in-depth video about the pie cycle top. Again, find that at uh, Dan teaches crypto. And when we took a look at it, pie cycle top was created in 2019. Retroactively, or retrospectively, it could call the top almost to a T. And then it almost called the top in 2021, a little bit off, but that's just how it is. So what I want to take a look at was, well, how, Accurate was it? And of course, if you're not familiar, PyCycle Top uses the 111 day moving average and a newly created multiple of the 350 day moving average, uh, which is 350 times two. When the 111 day moving average moves up and crosses the 350 day, we see that it coincides with the price of Bitcoin peaking. And I just thought about that. I go, maybe, let's see how accurate it actually was. So here's the PyCycle Top and how it's called the top in every one of the cycles. And just for reference, when I talk about cycles, I mean the four year cycles for Bitcoin, everything starts with a halving. First one was uh, 2012, you have a halving, and you get an all-time high, and there's a dip, and there's a reset. And the same thing happened again in 2016, there's a halving, uh, 2017 all-time high, a dip and a reset. And then coincidentally, the same thing happened in 2020, we had a halving all-time high, and we're seeing a major dip and probably another reset in 2023, but I think we'll be back on track in 2024, 25, 26, 27, as things gonna work themselves out. So when we take a look at, again, the Pi cycle top, the first one, the first uh, cycle, it actually was very close. Not perfect, but pretty close. And you can see here that uh, this point, the lower part here where it has uh, the price of $141, that's what it retroactively, retrospectively took a look at and go, that was the top. But actually it wasn't. It was $214. So that was the first one. The second one is even more strange. You had, it called it out at uh, 1090 when in actuality, it was 1184, so pretty darn close. And this was the only time you had a double top in roughly the same time period, the same cycle in 2013. So it did in April and it did in December, which is actually, let me rephrase that. It said in November 29, 2013 was the Pi cycle top. And then in April 2013 was the Pi cycle top, which is very interesting uh, because in 2021, the Pi cycle top was in April 11th. 2021, but the actual top was in November 2021. Just something to think about. So second one, now here comes the third one. In 2017, it nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. 
and it, uh, there is no higher. It's uh, hit it at 19,326, so roughly around there. So uh, I think no one could fault you for selling a little hundred dollars off here and there. And that's a good one. And then the fourth one, of course, like we just talked about, April 11th, 2021, the Pi Cycle Top called the top at 60,148 when the actual top was November 8th, 2021 at 67,492. So again, this are, these are still good numbers, but you have to remember this. Everything starts with the Bitcoin pump and then alts pump. So I took a look at the historical snapshot of 11th of April, 2021, and Bitcoin, the price was 60,000. Ethereum was 2,100. Finance coin was 525, XRP $1.36, and so on and so forth. And what I did was I took a look at the top ones and just compared what the Pi Cycle top, top price points were compared to what they actually were on different dates. So Bitcoin, of course, April 11th uh, was 60,000. The real one was on November 8th, and it was at 67,000. So 11% 11 difference between the top. So even if you would have sold here, you'll only be 11% away from the top. Not too bad. Ethereum, you were off quite a bit, actually. April 11th, it was 2157. November 8th, 2015, that was 55%. Binance Coin was only 22% off, not too bad. XRP, 24%. Cardano was way off. Uh, April 11th was 127 and actually peaked at 296. That's a 60% difference. However, Polkadot, Litecoin, and Uniswap were pretty darn close, 23, 34, 30. And the biggest one that was the, the biggest outlier was Solana. It was 2793 of the Pi Cycle price. Uh, the real all-time high price, 259 on November 6th. So that would have been an issue. However, this is what I always think about, or I'm starting to think about a lot more now, which is DCA in and DCA out. I'm on a dollar cost average in, like we all know everybody talks about on YouTube just about ad nauseum. But I think that's just half of the equation. You have to dollar cost average out. And what I'm going to do and I hit that Pi Cycle top on the next one because we had a long way to go. We have a very, very long way to go when that 111-day moving average crosses over. I will be selling 50% of all of my crypto. And I'll tell you exactly why later. I'll be selling 50% of all my crypto. Does that mean that I will miss out on some, on some tops, uh, some various ones? Yes, like uh, maybe Ethereum Cardano or something that's, that isn't even in the top 100. Uh, I could definitely be, be missing out. But that's okay because it's all about averages. So I'll be selling 50% of my crypto. And then I'll be waiting for some different signs and I'll sell another 20% and then 10% later down the road. I will not hit all the tops. And my goal is to hit 60 to 80% of the tops. I will not hit 100%. I will not buy at the absolute bottom. It just doesn't work like that. And it's gonna take a lot of pressure off me. Last time, I think it was just dumb luck of what I got to. I think this time, I'm going to take a little bit more uh, look at some indicators. But remember this, everything starts after the Bitcoin Pi cycle top, which we're going to play into uh, right now. Okay, so I hope that, hold on, first of all, I hope that section made a lot of sense because it all really comes down to is like people say, well, I'm going to hit this, I'm going to sell everything. And if you do that, I think you're going to hit off, you're going to miss out on some massive gains, what I just showed you, especially... Uh, Solana. I mean, April 11th, it was whatever, the same price it is right now, actually. And then I went up to $250 or whatever it was. So it's, it's important. If you're going to dollar cost average in, I think it's important for me to dollar cost average out. Of course, you do whatever you do. And then, of course, you don't feel like, ah, crap, I missed it. Because there's nothing worse. I saw this, I saw this in, in the chats right now. There's nothing worse than when you sell and all of a sudden it takes off, which is another meme that you can you know, play into. It's more important, I feel like, if you're going to take some profits and take it along the way, that you just kind of ladder out and then you don't feel so bad. And, of course, there's some indicators. And one of those, and this is just the first one, is the Pi Cycle Top. Now we're going to get into some other things, which I think will help you to gauge it a little bit better uh, moving forward. So... Let's uh, go into that. So once again, when the Pi Cycle Top hits, I'm going to take a look at not just the Pi, Pi Cycle Top indicator, because that is the first one that I'm going to look at, but there's various ones I'm definitely going to look at. And that is the net unrealized profit and loss. I'm going to also take a look at historic risk levels, MVRVZ score, and the, well, multiple just to get a bearing. Now, I don't want to do too much analysis and get paralysis by analysis. I just want to look at these and go from there to see if I'm in the right ranges. Again, I'm not here to time the absolute top at 100% or time the absolute bottom. So I'm just trying to get close as I possibly can. So 
retrospectively, if we look back at, uh, we, we know the Pi cycle top, the top was uh, April 11th, 2021. So if I was to, on that day, take a look at the NUPL, let me just uh, blow this up here. And what I like about this, these are, uh, this is from Look into Bitcoin. And these charts are available for free. They're high quality. I love to use them, first of all, because they're free and they're great. And it makes things very simple, right? When you're in the pink range, it's probably a good idea to, because this is when everybody's uh, greedy, probably a good idea to take a little bit of profits. Maybe, and also in the orange uh, part as well, optimism anxiety. When it gets down to the, the green area, probably a, a decent time to think about accumulating. We talk about this uh, at length on the channel. But if we take a look here, we can see this expanded view and we can take a look all the way back to 2010 and uh, go forward. So what I'm gonna do here is of course, we know that the Pi cycle top was uh, April 11th. So I will uh, zoom back in so you can see it in all its glory and just take a look at where we're at. So again, if I was looking at the Pi cycle top and I think, okay, April 11th, yeah, the 111 day moving average crossed over. So this could be a, the time to sell. Maybe I'll take a look at the NUPL just to make sure. And just so everybody's on the same page. Uh, and again, we, we covered this uh, at length on the last video, I have a plan, but just to make sure everybody's here. When we take a look at uh, the NUPL, the indicator is derived from market value and realized value. Market value is the current price of Bitcoin multiplied by the number of coins in circulation. Realized value takes the price of each Bitcoin when it was last moved. So you've got some whales that haven't moved them for quite some time when Bitcoin was 100 bucks. So by subtracting realized value from market value, we calculate unrealized profit and losses. Unrealized profit and loss estimates the total profit and loss, paper losses in Bitcoin held by investors or profits. So again, as time goes on and prices uh, fluctuate, you can see this is a pretty good one to take a look at. So again, if I'm taking a look at... April 11th, I'm in the orange zone, which so I could say, okay, well, it's not down here and it's not in this uh, uh, freebie zone or point of no return, capitulation, hope, optimization. And uh, yeah, this could be one. Now I'm all the way not into the red zone, but we haven't seen that for quite some time. So if I was looking at this, I'd be like, okay, that's a second indicator that looks like it might be a good chance for me to start to take profits. Also, if we take a look at the historic risk levels. Now this is from Ben's website into the Cryptoverse. And it's a, it's, it's a great website, links in the description. It is a paid website, but it's worth it. I'm gonna tell you why. Because we take a look at these risk levels, it's another indicator which could say, okay, this looks quite interesting. So let me reset the zoom again. Again, the risk levels, as they go up, the higher they go, the more risky it is. So it's a good idea to think about taking profits when we start to peak, especially above the 0 0.9 reference range. I think we can all agree there. And there's only been one, two, three, four, five points in history in roughly 12 years. So again, if I want to take a look at, I want to zoom in to this area around the uh, April 2021. Where are we here? So February, March... April 11th, I'm actually at, the Bitcoin risk level is 0 0.7, almost 0 0.8. Again, back here, it looks like it was pretty risky. However, we didn't see the Pi cycle top yet, even though it was a little risky, but it's high enough for me to say, okay, it's not below five, it's not below four, it's pretty risky. Again, that would be a check for me to move on. Another one would be the MVRVZ score. So I take a look at this and the MVRBZ, it's a Bitcoin chart that uses blockchain analysis to identify periods when Bitcoin is extremely over or undervalued. It takes the, the market value, price of Bitcoin multiplied by the number of coins to the realized value, rather than taking the current price of Bitcoin, realized value takes the price of each Bitcoin when it's last moved again. And the Z score is a standard deviation that pulls out all the extremes. So again, if we take a look here, let me just blow this up so we can see it. I'm looking for, again, April, February, again, February was, it was a good time, but it wasn't, uh, wasn't too great to that time. I think we we're, we're playing around 48, 50,000. So it could have been okay. But uh, down here, March, where are we? March, 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 April, April 11th. So the Z score again, above five, not in the orange zone. So I'd say, well, that doesn't really tick what I uh, thought I would, but I've got a couple other indicators. So that's not bad. And last. Okay. So before we go on about that one, this is what I, what I've been talking about for a while now is that the last bull run seemed a little bit off, especially with the indicators. And this is why you should probably take a look at multiple indicators 
before you say, you know what, bicycle top, nailed it. I'm just gonna use that one and that's it. I think you have to really, it's important that you get a lot of different indicators because of things that happen such as this. And I, and we've, we've taken a look and I know uh, Dubstep or <laughs> Dub put out that uh, Sam Bakeman Fried is on uh, the stand right now in the court case against uh, FTX. And uh, we know that Sam Bakeman Fried and uh, Caroline Ellison, uh, for the CEO of FTX, and a lot of different people in FTX, they conspired to manipulate the price of Bitcoin to keep it below 20K. That wasn't just me saying it. That wasn't a bunch of trolls saying it. That was her and her testimony uh, before the court. So we know that there was a lot of shenanigans going on behind the scenes. There was a lot of things that happened with not only FTX, which had a massive amount to keep that price low. It also, we had Three Arrows Capital screwing things up for us. You also had the Voyagers out there loaning to Three Arrows Capital and then losing all their money. You had Celsius and also BlockFi. So in all these things that were happening behind the scenes, there was a lot of manipulation, which I always felt that the last bull cycle was just straight up shenanigans. And I just thought like we should have gone a heck of a lot higher. And that's why I think this one is better. I know we don't want to hear that uh, as far as like with regulation, but regulation's coming. This will probably be the last unregulated bull market uh, that we see moving forward. I think it's going to be uh, phenomenal uh, moving forward. But again, that's why you use a bunch of different indicators because not one will tell you everything. All right, so let's keep going with this. And uh, lastly, I'll take a look at the Puel multiple just to be sure. And the Puel multiple looks at the supply side of Bitcoin uh, as far as miners and the revenue. It's calculated by, by dividing the daily issuance value of Bitcoins by the 365 day moving average. It uses the upper red band of the chart to show when minor revenues in, in USD terms are significantly higher. Okay. So again, if we take a look at, ooh, let's see, right around here. And we go to the April point, uh, April 11th. And almost in that uh, red band right there. So I would say yes. So again, I took the 12 multiple, which is just for proof of work for minor things like that. And the RVC score, eh, not so much. The risk level, I would say yes. And UPL, and of course, the pie cycle top is the one that is it. So at this point, I would say yes, I would have sold if I would have uh, done it correctly. And this is what I'll be doing moving forward. So that would take care of the part for Bitcoin. Now, the next question that you may have is, well, that's great for all these things, but what about for the alts? Because it's a little bit different uh, as we just, just saw. We can do the same exact thing. And the way that we can do that is using Ben's website. So did you know that the Pi Cycle Top 11 day moving average uh, crosses over the 350 day moving average times two can be done with Ethereum. It can be done with Binance Coin, XRP, Cardano, Solana, no, all these things. And it can be done in one place on Ben's website into the Cryptoverse. So again, we want to take a look at all of them. So let's take Ethereum. Let me, uh, there we go, Ethereum. So the Pi Cycle Top for Ethereum doesn't really work out too hot, honestly. Because uh, it's telling you that it crossed over. You're looking at 21st of May 2017 when the ETH price is 148. But in all honesty, it went to over almost $1,500. And the last one it did, eh, not too bad. 7th of March again, 17, almost $2,000. So it'd still be 50% off. That's not too great. So again, what I would do is I would say, well, because remember, everything starts with Pi Cycle Top and Bitcoin shooting up to the stratosphere and then come the alt. So what I would do is I would just wait and see, well, maybe we'll take a look at the NUPL. Let me change this to Ethereum. And what I wanna do, actually, let me reset the zoom. You'll notice here for the NUPL, over on the look, look into Bitcoin, it has on the right-hand side, it has the Bitcoin price. On the left-hand side, it has percentages as far as how much it's gone up or down. And this, of course, will be 100% of max range or where we were at the very, very tippy top. And of course, negative almost 50% or 42% uh, down here. However, take a look over here for uh, Ben's. For the NUPL, it's a little bit different. Uh, we've got the market cap over here and the NUPL ratio, which goes up to positive 0 0.5 and down to negative 3. Okay. We can see as we zoom out that uh, the baseline level is around, um, well, of course, we have 0 here and it goes down pretty pretty negatively across the board. But if we take a look here, again, what we want to take a look is we want to see around after uh, April of 2021 and what happened after there. So if I was me, 
And I would take a look at this. Again, I can't take a look forward because I would be looking at this in real time. So let's just say I'm back in April 11th right here at 0 0.479. And I think if I look back, I say, well, the top last or beforehand was 0 0.6. So maybe I want to get a little closer, maybe 0 0.55 or somewhere around there because maybe that's not it. Because I know that Bitcoin tops and then the alt start to top. So anything after April 11th, I'd probably say it might be a good time. So let's see here, 0 0.51, eh, maybe not. Around here, 51, 52. So right around here, what's this? The 3rd of May, 2021, 0 0.5. I'd probably want to get rid of 50% of my Ethereum at this point. So 0 0.56, uh, that was uh, 3rd of May, 2021. If we take a look here, I don't know, uh, 3rd of May, where would that be? Not bad, 3,500. So we missed it by about 1,000, roughly. And uh, again, I will never hit the top, but I think it's a good way just to take a look at things of, of where we're at and uh, go from there. Again, once I get 50%, if it goes up some more, let's say it's uh, across another, you know, goes up another 10, 20%. Well, I can sell another 20% later because I have things in reserves. I will never sell all my crypto, but I'll probably sell a big chunk. So that is that part. And then also, if we take a look at uh, MVRVZ score, Let's see what that would tell us. Well, again, we're at 2021, and this is Bitcoin. I need to change that uh, to Ethereum. Da -da -da. Right here, let's zoom in. So, well, this looks tasty. See this one right here? Again, same thing, 13th of March. I'm looking at these, at these points. If I'm looking at anything above four, this would all be good times to, to sell. Again, taking a look at different charts and different graphs just to get an idea of where I'm potentially at. Historical risk levels, let's take a look at ETH. And let's blow this up a little better so we can see it. So again, above 0 0.9 is a good time. When do I get zero? Okay, 10th of May, the same thing. And yeah, 3,400, 3,500. Again, not gonna time the top, but it's okay. And then lastly, well, the Puel multiple <laughs> would have worked uh, when it was proof of work, but now it's proof of stake. So that just kind of goes to the wayside. Same thing with Cardano and so on and so forth. So again, you can use anything that you want to, but it's putting together these different charts just to give you an idea of where things are going to say, okay, okay, that looks like uh, it's a good time to potentially sell. That looks like a good time, it's a good time. And over time and using uh, multiple pieces of data, you can make the best decision uh, for yourself. Again, this is not financial advice. These are the things that I'm going to be doing very closely as we move forward. And there was one last piece that I forgot to talk about, which is this. I believe in the four-year cycles, like we talked about uh, at length. However, that doesn't mean that this will happen in 2025. It may happen in 2024 or even 2023 or maybe even 2026 or seven. I don't know. But the thing is you have to be aware of is you have to be conscious of the changes that could potentially take form. Don't get married to one idea like I did in the past and say like, it has to happen at this, it has to happen at this way. Just take a look at the data. And when the data changes, you change. But the things that I see right here, these are things that I will still look for. Picycle top, MBRBZ, well multiple, well for Bitcoin. And of course the risk factors. If we can take a look at all those things, I think we can get a better understanding of when to potentially sell. Now, that'll lead me to my last two points, which are exchanges and the mentality. So I was muted. <laughs> so that was it pretty much because we're going to go over exchanges. And I just say that there's only a couple of exchanges that uh, Americans can use, which right now is uh, Coinbase. I don't even think you can, Gemini is being sued right now, so who knows? Kraken, and uh, for specific areas, I think crypto.com is also being used. And of course, if you're outside of America, congratulations, you're not oppressed like we are, and you can use pretty much whatever you want. But uh, that's it for uh, the video. I hope that helped a little bit. Now I know you might have some questions about that one. A lot of data, a lot of information to go over. So we've been here for 45 minutes. Thanks so much, I appreciate it. Like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff.